Welcome to the Let's Talk Crypto podcast, where we discuss the latest Bitcoin, blockchain, and digital asset news. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our first episode of Let's Talk Crypto. Exciting, exciting to start this off. And let's see where it goes. A very informal discussion between us. And I will kick it right off with some introductions. Let's start with you, Suyash. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Suyash. So I'm Suyash from Mauritius actually, a, very, a tiny island in the Indian Ocean. So basically, I am the founder of a software development company specialized in the development of flexible blockchain apps. So it's a handful, but basically what I do is um, I just I just specialize in the development of blockchain applications. And this is how I, I, I got interested in blockchain and, and related stuff. Okay. And you born in Mauritius? Yeah, correct. Born in Mauritius, raised in Mauritius. So I've, uh, I've stayed in Mauritius for the last 35 years. And how did you first come across uh, cryptocurrency or Bitcoin? Well, it was, if I'm not wrong, three and a half years ago. Uh, I was just working on, on one of my software and I stumbled upon an online article talking about blockchain uh, and cryptocurrency. And when I first read about it, I didn't understand anything, absolutely anything about it, which was um, quite normal, I think. But the fact that I didn't understand anything uh, that pushed me to actually um, research more about it and this is how I would say my adventure started with crypto and blockchain. Were you, were you first interested perhaps in Ethereum or Bitcoin? Or? My first point of introduction with blockchain and crypto was actually Ethereum and smart contracts because it involved a lot of uh, like programming and things that I was very familiar with. It was something that got me interested very quickly. And from this point, I started learning about cryptocurrencies, um, especially um, Ethereum and more importantly, Bitcoin. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. Omar, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. I am originally from Pakistan. I live in Karachi. It's a big metropolitan city, but I, most of my young and adult life was spent in the U.S., in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, and I started teaching and doing application development when I first started after I left university. So this was around like in the mid 2000s, I would say, like early 2000s, mid 2000s and late 2000s. And then after that, I kind of started uh, doing some different things online and I came across cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin in like 2017. And at that point, I had kind of just left everything else I was doing and I just started researching about it. And then I became actively involved in, yeah, in late 2017 and just been writing news articles about uh, cryptocurrencies, blockchain, Bitcoin, open source uh, software. And by now I've probably written about 14, I'd say 1400 uh, articles on different things and I'm, I'm kind of involved in other things now too like blockchain consulting and I kind of don't like saying that word blockchain consulting because a lot of I don't know some of the, some of the bad not the very best consultants out there or not maybe the most qualified or I don't know they might not have the right intentions can't really speak for everybody but like you know basically just giving simple advice on projects like where can we take this from here from step one to step two so that's, it's kind of been an enjoyable ride for me so far, experience in, in as far as uh, crypto is. Concerned. And how did you say you discovered crypto? You said in 2017. Was it the headlines? Or? I was on Facebook. I, I didn't want, I, I wasn't even trying to discover anything. I was on Facebook and I saw this ad where you can just make money from being on social media, like Steam it. It was, at that time, Steam it was kind of decent, I think. So I, in terms of being, giving payouts. So I was just, I saw this ad on Facebook and then I just went on to 
Steam it. And I was looking at all the different things and I was just writing blogs on Steam it. And someone approached me on Steam it and they said that, why don't you start writing about cryptocurrencies? And I said, okay, sure. Then I started doing that. And then since I started doing that, I haven't stopped and uh, don't really, don't really plan on stopping. Okay. And Slava, last but not least, before myself, a small introduction on on yourself, where you're from, and what you're all about. Hi, everyone. So I'm I was born in the Soviet Union. I grew up in Tashkent, Uzbekistan, and I went to college in Kentucky, United States. I've always been very entrepreneurial as long as I can remember myself. And I've launched several projects while still in college, but I realized that I really want to work with technology because you can take a very small snippet of code and uh, make it usable for a very large number of people. And so after graduating from college, I returned back to Uzbekistan and started working in technology where I've been for the last five and a half, six years. I've done many projects over the time, but I have found a lot of satisfaction and interest working with blockchain and cryptocurrency projects. And I've been in that industry for about two and a half, three years now. And uh, so the first time I've heard about Bitcoin was actually 2013. I remember that I just recently came back uh, from the States where I majored in finance and business administration. And for me, financial modeling was the most exciting class ever. So I remember sitting with a professor and uh, badgering him, asking him questions to the point where he was not able to answer them. I really enjoyed building financial models. Unfortunately, when I came back to Uzbekistan, I was not able to buy stock or bonds on the international market. So I could not build portfolios and do the data analysis. And then I found about Bitcoin. And so I started reading about it. And I remember myself clearly understanding the value for myself, for foremost, because uh, back then the economy was very protectionist and also for the global community. The only problem was that I did not have means of purchasing Bitcoin. So I, I remember I read about mining, I understood what it was, and I asked my friend to launch an online miner on Amazon because I realized that if your expenses are less uh, to mine Bitcoin are less than what would be the potential profit, the, the value of Bitcoin, you gain profit. He completely disregarded me back then. So that was my first <laughs> first to crypto. I, I, I should check with him back and see if he still thinks that it was a waste of time and you know useless useless. And he, he was already he was already involved in crypto. He he was an engineer, so that was the reason why I came to him. He was a really good friend of mine. He did not he was not involved in crypto and I think he still belongs to the camp of skeptics. But because I just started my career in technology, so I didn't have the skill set to launch the miner myself in the cloud. So I thought it's a good idea to have a conversation with him and kind of try to convince him. Okay. Okay. Very, very interesting. And do you remember what first caught your attention to Bitcoin? Yes. Uh, like I was saying, uh, you know, I was very always interested in financial modeling, investment analysis, investment management, but I could not get my hands on stocks or bonds or, uh, you know, traditional financial assets because of the limitations and because I was not a U.S. I'm not a U.S. citizen. Uh, however, I could I clearly saw the, the the opportunity of Bitcoin and that it grew in whatever uh, like hundreds of percent in the last month and I understood the drivers which were behind the growth. So I really wanted to uh, experiment and continue gaining the skills as an investment manager with cryptocurrencies. So basically, I mean, what caught your attention about it would have been headlines about price and the the gains that it had been making. Yes. Yes. Correct. Okay. All right. Well, myself, Wes Colson, I'm born in South Africa. I'm half Mauritian, half South African. I also live on the island of Mauritius, a small little island in the Indian Ocean. I am involved in various uh, business ventures, uh, including real estate, which has actually turned now into a family business, tourism, and some online marketing and marketplace activities. And finally, been bitten by the Bitcoin cryptocurrency bug and am involved in various ventures there, which includes uh, retail of cryptocurrency. 
I first heard of Bitcoin in 2012, was quite skeptical. I liked the idea, was quite skeptical, to be honest. My first thought that came to mind was governments around the world would never accept that. I didn't know how or, or the technology worked, and I didn't know how a government would end it. All I knew in my mind was they would not accept it. They would squash it uh, by any means. So I didn't go rush out and buy a Bitcoin, unfortunately. At that stage, I probably could have bought a whole barrel load of them, but I didn't. I watched it and did not take part. Around about 2013 also, started to notice the, the more hype around it. And the, obviously, price is, a, is quite an enticing um, lure and was very surprised that it, it was still around actually. That same sentiment just increased and increased and I found myself lurking in the forums, whether it's on the Bitcoin talk forums and researching, reading all, anything that I could find, absorbing all the information, Reddit, Bitcoin talk, everything that you can imagine. And was clearly bitten by the bug. Made my first purchase though for Bitcoin was around $180 to $200. And that was, I can't remember exactly. I would have to go and look at a chart, but it was probably around the, the 2013, 2014, somewhere around there. Didn't buy many uh, and just held on to it. In terms of getting more actively involved, really only began in, 2015, I would say around about September, October, started exploring other opportunities within the, within the space. My, my story, uh, but, but what interests me in Bitcoin is having grown up in, in South Africa where there's forex controls, where the, the monetary policy is very restrictive and they control inflows and outflows of capital. And as a, as a person within the country, you have certain limitations of how much uh, money you can move abroad, you know, how much money you can send to pay off uh, external invoices. If you immigrate and move away from the country, you only take so much out per year per person. And experiencing the, the centralized control of the currency by the government, it, it put me in a position where I was more in tune with what the harmful effects are of, of a centralized uh, monetary system. So. Bitcoin immediately intrigued me with its decentralized nature and its uh, control over inflation and no central control. I think from, from, my, from my side, that's, that's where I got, got interested. And I think we can all agree that once you go down that rabbit hole, you can get lost. <laughs> Correct. So, Suyat, random question. It's the year 2025, <laughs> right? Let's pretend. Okay. What is the price of Bitcoin? And what do you think the, the status of adoption will be? Well, 2025. So I would say that the price of Bitcoin is at least 300,000, 400,000 USD. Okay. okay. Um, that's very, Interesting. Like, very high. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> but really, I'm being very pessimistic. So that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that too. <laughs> yeah. And in terms of adoption, well, Honestly, seeing the rate of adoption right now um, concerning Bitcoin and, and for any other cryptocurrency for that matter, I would say that by that time, at least 50% of microtransactions or bigger transactions will be through uh, the Bitcoin blockchain. So we're okay. talking about buying um, small stuff like your bread, um, like buying pizzas are uh, very commonly paid with Bitcoin and, and businesses um, accepting Bitcoin, having their Bitcoin accounting systems at the back, managing all this. Uh, it's funny how you answer that question because when I, when, I, when I thought about that question, I said to myself, okay, Bitcoin will be around about 400,000. <laughs> um, I know there's a hundred thousand uh, dollar difference there, but it's funny that we've we've pushed it up that high. And my 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 logic behind was it was that the Lightning Network would probably have a capacity of the entire 2019 market cap of Bitcoin, 
And I thought to myself, retailers like McDonald's, Starbucks, and, and all these, like you said, micro transactions or smaller transactions, like for that micro, I would say is even smaller than that, like streaming video and that, but smaller transactions would all be running, you know, all the little visa, the visa transactions would be running on the, on the lightning network. And I thought to myself, if you've got all the McDonald's and all the Starbucks and all the little retailers all running off um, the lightning network, it's quite possible that the, the, the capacity of the lightning network by that stage would be at least the size of the entire Bitcoin market cap to, of today's date. And, um, and I thought that most of the top cap, the, the existing top cap cryptocurrencies will probably be interoperable with Bitcoin or, or if not pegged to, to Bitcoin uh, using atomic swaps and things like that, whether it's via the, the lightning network. Um, and, and I thought to myself that you probably find that most companies by that stage will have issued their, their own tokens in the form of loyalty points, uh, rewards, things like air miles. Probably most likely will all be released on blockchain and all pegged in some way to each other. And then ultimately, perhaps even pegged to, to Bitcoin itself. What do you think of that? That, that wouldn't be surprising at all. I mean... Currently, right now, um, Bitcoin is, a, is the biggest um, block. I would say biggest and most stable, most robust, most secure blockchain. And I, I don't foresee that this situation will change in the in the future. And until um, 2025, I think it will be more so the case. So yes, um, a lot of systems, a lot of um, you could say side chains pegged with the main Bitcoin. Um, network would probably be the norm, and yes, you you just you you approach a very important um, tech, the uh, Lightning Network. I'm very very uh, like um, positive about this tech. Um, I've played with it a bit um, a few months back, and I was really like astonished with with the potential, um, the near instant um, transfers. Um, the channels and so on. I mean, I'm really, really optimistic about this technology. Omar, I pose the same question to you. What do you think? It's the year 2025. What is the price of Bitcoin and what do you predict will be the status of adoption? I try not to predict prices because I've seen no problem. that uh, people don't have much control over outcome of future events because there's so many variables involved. But I do observe patterns. For instance, I don't know if you guys noticed this today, but the 30-day average exchange volume for Ether hit an all-time high today of 5.5 billion. In the last... That's interesting. I didn't see it. In the last... Yeah, I'll send you the tweet and the guy who shared it and everything, but... And the last, That's the last high was set approximately one year earlier at roughly around 5.4 billion. Well, what's crazy about this, to me at least, is that if you read data from like on-chain FX, it says the real 10 24-hour volume for ETH stands at 55% of Bitcoin's volume, which is like huge because Ether is now nowhere close to Bitcoin's market cap, which is like uh, Ether is about one fifth of Bitcoin's market. So we have these huge decentralized systems that do not behave predictably. They do not. And we try to make assessments based on our understanding of centralized systems like Facebook is a lot good point. It's a lot easier to predict what Facebook what will happen to Facebook and maybe even Twitter and it's a much much more difficult to try to guess what a decentralized system is going to do next because there isn't like one person dictating the flow of how things are going to be conducted and for anyone to, okay. to, to, I don't think I don't care who you are I don't care if you if you've won a Nobel Prize, I don't, I don't care what it is. It's just not, I don't think it's possible to make 
to make accurate or reasonable predictions about uh, what's going to happen. And this, this, this thinking that, that kind of is in, the, uh, in our space is negative thinking, this negative um, uh, type that, okay, our protocol is the best and, and, and we are the only company or we are the only cryptocurrency that's going to make it. There's these a kind of tribalism. These, these false beliefs, like you don't know what's going to happen next. You you don't you you can barely control what's happening. I mean, you can't even control what's happening in your life. So, how do you think your ideas are going to prevail over um, others? And if we can do anything like positive, for example, Alice Alistair Milner, or I think it was, he said that. EOS is in or block one is in the in the business of selling blockchains. I mean, he's saying that and and like everyone with block one, block dot one, Brendan Bloomer, Brock Pierce, and so on, just because they are rich, that means they're in the business of selling blockchains. But if that's so not true. So when I, I mean, when I told him that, I told him, like, okay, this is not right. You can't. It was a conversation between me and him, but then other people had to jump in and start, you know, supporting whoever it is. And it's, it's, the conversation is still going on right now. And I've blocked like half the people in that conversation because it's just annoying. So out of all this, what I can see. Sort of, sort of troll, troll, troll yeah, armies it's, on Twitter. It's really like, like nobody knows what's going to happen. Be realistic. Uh, I never got into this space for the money. I never said, okay, I'm going to get rich by buying, Fair by, by buying this Fair token. Enough. Uh, Fair enough. But I mean, I think that the, 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 the space itself has always got one eye on price. And it's just, I think um, that yeah, I'm although not you're right, it's you know, bad it's to have something. Good, uh, a high valued Bitcoin. It's not bad, but that can't be the focus. That can't be our focus if we're going to sure. move forward. I just don't think that that's healthy. Sure. No, no. Fair enough. Fair enough. And Slava, what is your, what is your take on the whole? Twenty twenty five is the year. Uh, what is the price of Bitcoin, and what is the state of adoption? I would probably refer to Tim Draper, uh, defer to his opinion because I think he was correct with his previous prediction. And so, for those who uh, who doesn't know, who don't know who Tim Draper is, he's a prolific investor who's very bullish on Bitcoin. And uh, he, he believes that it's going to be 250000 per coin by 2022. So I, I would say yes. 250000 to $300,000. But I, I, I do want to kind of touch base on what Amar was saying just uh, a second ago, which is it's really challenging to predict what the price will be. And I think that... It stems from the fact that right now there is limited utility to any cryptocurrency. However, having said this, it's obviously is changing. And so probably you guys heard about this just recently, SEC, which is a regulator in the United States, has released, has started to release a guidance framework for condu- conducting uh, coin offerings. And so I do think, just like you, as you were saying earlier, it's 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 really first they're gonna ignore you, right? Then uh, I forgot the phrase, <laughs> but anyways, I, I know I know the saying. I know the saying. I think Andreas Antonopoulos loves uh, loves quoting it at, at his speeches. It's something like first they ignore you, then uh, they hate then you. They, you know, they're, they, they ridicule you, they fight you, and then they laugh at you, and you know, and then eventually they they, they join you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and and just like in 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 South Africa, I was talking to two actually team members from Team Draper's team a couple months ago, and they're from Venezuela, and we all know what's happening there with the inflation level, and we we're just chatting about how Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is used in Venezuela to avoid an efficient government policy. So that's definitely used for blockchain and cryptocurrency. And uh, just like Suyash uh, mentioned, the Lightning Network has a huge potential. I was, you know, I just recently installed the wallet and I, I made a purchase, just a test purchase using Lightning Network. And it's amazing. It's fast, it's reliable, and it 
you know, it has a niche, it's definitely has a niche. So as we see the utility for the Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies grow, uh, the more use cases uh, will be integrated with real life, the value will grow. What I am certain about is that because of that, the volatility, the price volatility will certainly decrease um, as more and more people start using it in everyday life. That makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, as the asset grows, as the market cap grows, uh, it should sort of flatten out the volatility. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. All right. You touched a bit on the, the news piece uh, with regards to the SEC. Do you, do you think that that's, uh, that's something that's really going to drive growth going forward? I mean, it, 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 sh it, it should, in theory give institutions or larger businesses more confidence to dip their feet into the space and perhaps those that already have to in to further invest do you think that it's going to have a a very positive effect on the on the market in general not just in terms of of, of value and and price but the growth of the market the interest in in the space Absolutely. What I saw is that a lot of the ICO and blockchain cryptocurrency projects got scared because regulators across the world started knocking on their doors and asking questions and trying to take the new concept uh, and fit it into existing frameworks. Right. So uh, in America, they use something which is called Howey test. Uh, which is used to determine whether transaction falls under securities contract. But the thing about this test is that it was invented almost 100 years ago. And so I think that there's a lot of uncertainty as far as re how regulators across the world see uh, blockchain cryptocurrency projects. But just recently, uh, SEC has released a, as I said, started to release a framework guidance uh, which would allow not only big companies, but also smaller companies because to get into crypto and start raising funds in one way or another uh, for their projects using Bitcoin and blockchain. If we look at that specific case, the beneficiary, the company that benefited from the, uh, the, uh, the updated policy is not very large. It's a jet leasing company and has only two planes. Okay. Yes, I, I, I did see that blog post actually that, that, that you wrote. Very, very interesting though. Very, very, very interesting. Something else that I saw in the news recently, and, I, and I'll go around. Obviously, Slava, you've mentioned that one. Something that I saw was the, that Facebook was potentially seeking $1 billion in funding to launch a stablecoin. Did anybody else see this? Yeah, I, I, yeah, um, I saw that too. I think you were going to yeah, name so it Facecoin, something like that. Am I right? I... I, I I, perhaps I mean I would I wouldn't be surprised, but I mean yeah. the first thing that came to mind for me was wasn't even you know the viability or or how it would work etc. I mean the first thing that came to mind for me was why does Facebook need one billion dollars in, in venture funding from third parties? I as far as I know you know they've got at least forty billion dollars sitting in cash, and it it's sort of. <laughs> It makes my mind wonder, you know, uh, it's a very strange thing. Maybe I don't know enough about how they, you know, how they do these things. But yeah, that's the first thing that came to mind. But just going around you, I mean, I think it would actually be a positive thing for crypto. I don't necessarily, you know, one of the ideals that I hold very strongly uh, is decentralization. I think for me, it's one of the most important reasons for a crypto ex existing, and which is why Bitcoin is definitely the camp that I sit in. And I... Uh, a Facebook launching a coin immediately uh, sort of, in my mind, negates the, 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 the decentralization of it, at least to the extent of what Bitcoin is. I do understand that they will have a huge marketing advantage, plus they've got a captive audience. I mean, I think adoption of the, the token or currency or digital currency, whatever you want to call it, I won't call it cryptocurrency. I think the the adoption will be unbelievable. It will be very rapid. And I think it, it won't be long before we forget what, what it was like before we had that that uh, face coin or lack of a better word, I'll call it face coin for now. 
However, I, I don't think that Bitcoin will lose its use case, if I can put it that way. I, I still believe that it, Bitcoin's uh, core use case is the it, core core uh, feature is is it being decentralized. It's it's store of value principles and um, censorship resistance. I think will be uh, will still hold it in good stead. If anything, maybe the 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 currency launched by Facebook would would bring more attention to this space. Uh, just going around. I mean, Suyash, what do you think? Do you, do you do you agree, or I mean, what what are your thoughts on that? Absolutely, I think that. Um ultimately it could be a good thing um it could be like um a large scale uh, with with what we call what we would call face coin we would see a, a large scale adoption of cryptocurrencies okay even if it's a stable coin and what i believe could happen is this would spur um, more development more innovation um, in other cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, uh, maybe making it more user friendly, make all the technology more user friendly. And um, if Facebook launches its own cryptocurrency, um, surely they will launch it in, in, in such a way that people are very familiar with, with the system and they don't feel alienated. And this same effect would be very useful for other cryptocurrencies. And ultimately, I think that um, it would be a good thing. Um, I, I completely also agree but you with know, yeah. You know they're gonna get the user interface right. You, you know that, <laughs> definitely they'll get the user interface Absolutely. right. So I mean, they will act kind of like a stepping stone because I mean, it is quite a leap to go. I mean, I, I just speak for myself here, my, my parents, if I had to, to try and just let them go and set up a Bitcoin wallet right now and actually transact, I think there would be a, a mess on our hands and, and money will probably get lost. So I think that, you know, we've got to acknowledge that we are likely still in the fir first early adopter stage, kind of like when email came out and it was all clunky and, and you know, you had to have a little bit of, of, of technical prowess to 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 it to use it it wasn't necessary then people didn't need email then they still lived their daily lives without it they had the fax machine they had post they had um couriers but some people uh, started using it before others the early adopters and they needed a little bit more technical sort of prowess um, at, at their fingertips i think that that's where we are now and i think something like facebook would be like a stepping stone or like you know, to, to sort of bridge the divide and 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 probably the, the crypto space could could learn a lot from from how they they put a user interface and the user experience together so slava what what are your thoughts on that um i think that the both and the tails uh i've seen several projects where uh large corporations claim that they are going to release or are releasing cryptocurrency but in a sense it's a centralized centralized token and it's really far from the reality of cryptocurrency i i agree with the notion that it's going to give a boost to the whole blockchain cryptocurrency community if someone like facebook releases uh, its own coin but I am also a little bit skeptical about whether it can become a competitor to Bitcoin and use cases that Bitcoin can potentially cover being a decentralized, uh, decentralized cryptocurrency. So I, I also on a personal level, I would hate, like just you mentioned Wes, earlier uh, that Facebook has a lot of cash and they generate really hefty profits. But I would not like to see centralization of blockchain and crypto industry at the hands of large corporations because one of the values of the industry, unlike other industries which are very popular right now, like big, big data, AI, machine learning, this industry, the blockchain industry, is driven by community and driven 
by really talented people within the community. Uh, whereas you have to have a lot of data uh, to apply machine learning algorithms to it. So I, I, I think that blockchain is in a unique position in that sense. And um, yeah, so I probably would need to learn more about specifics of what Facebook is going to, is planning to do as far as and uh, their technology and uh, the, 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 the their potential currency. Sure. Sure, yeah. Look, I think the questions pose more sort of, Generally, I mean, we, I don't think anybody has the specifics yet on how they're going to launch it, whether, you know, how, how they're going to make it fair or you know, at all on how they're going to do it. Another story that comes to my mind, I believe JP Morgan and Chase has come around and started working on an internal blockchain. And I remember listening to this podcast recently, basically the speaker, he's a very prominent uh, entrepreneur in the New York, uh, New York City. And uh, he had a chat some, uh, with someone from the team who's working on the project for JP Morgan and Chase. And what they did, they just took Ethereum blockchain, they forked it and they made some slight adjustments to it. And so now they're posting this new technology uh, that they're going to use inside of their company, which kind of defeats the purpose of being the centralized cryptocurrency. So, um, yeah, there's so many different things. I mean, that reminds me of when the internet came out and then all the companies started touting intranet. Internal. internet yes yes you know walled gardens basically that the the user would wouldn't have freedom you know outside of that network which kind of defeats the whole purpose of of the mm-hmm. internet and, and look mm-hmm. where that is look where that is today you know so it's funny the similarities that we can draw from the birth of the internet and email and and those technologies that we that we use in our everyday lives and take for granted now and and how similar they are basically to to Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency. It also just illustrates how, how early we are in in, in, in this uh, development, if I can put it that way. And yourself, Omar, what, what uh, if not on the Facebook uh, topic, what what has got your attention in, in in the news in the last week or so that that is is worth uh, discussing? Um, you you come across a lot of. Uh, News, if I can put it that way, in the, from the blockchain blockchain space, as you do a lot of writing for for various uh, prominent uh, outlets, what do you feel is is worth discussing? A lot of things, like uh, for example, Coinbase Pro for professional traders, as you guys probably know, they've added recently added EOS Rep. Augur's rep token, Maker's MKR token. So we've added, they've finally added a few tokens, but these are not really available to people in New York. And you can trade EOS in USD, Euros, BTC. Same with rep token. And But Maker, interestingly, you can only trade right now with BTC and USDC. There's a reason for that, but I'm not going to, Go into that, but what a point I'm trying to make here is uh, people behind Coinbase are obviously they're not stupid. They've been they've been in the business for a long time, and uh, you know no business is perfect. But I think they have the right idea here when they add on, when they bring on tokens, starting like for example with EOS. I mean, by now people should be fairly convinced that. The company behind it and the people working on the project, they've launched over 200 different dApps at least. Of course, they're not all perfect, but it's it's a big step. And it's a serious platform. It's one of those platforms that is developing serious things like, uh, it's basically like you guys know, it's an operating system, decentralized. Uh, They're using WebAssembly for smart contracts, optional uh, high overhead, low low latency, BFT finality, latency block confirmation, half a second for those. If you look at their GitHub page, what I'm saying is it's it's definitely, I see this as an enterprise grade platform for building applications uh, in in the coming years. And then with all the- So you feel that that Coinbase giving the nod to certain tokens that have 
I presume you're saying they've just been uh, added to their platform. Yeah. Is is a sign? Is is a sort of a sign that that they they're probably going to be around for a while, and 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 we should keep an eye on them. It, right. It's it's not saying Coinbase is not saying EOS is the best platform or uh, EOS is going to be the number one thing. It's just saying it's a legitimate token and technology. They're doing real work. It's kind of hard to deny that. And then with Augur. It's been, there are some technical issues, same with EOS, different things. But in the end, are they contributing? Are they, are they, are they delivering working products? Yes, it is. I think it is Augur and, I mean, prediction market, if you don't, if you don't think there's a demand for that and that too, a decentralized one, I, I think there is. It's just a safe bet. And then decentralized finance, peer-to-peer -peer finance. That's nearly a half a billion dollar market already. And Maker, MKR token and Maker, the, their contracts themselves, there's already nearly $400, $400 million logged into these things. So they, there's serious money behind these projects, obviously. And then whenever there's serious money behind something and the organizations or the people behind all three of these projects, they're not like people who just kind of walked in when 2017 was like, you know, the prices skyrocket. They're not a scam ICO. These are not, these are not crappy. I don't care. Sure. What. No, I've heard about, I've heard about maker. I do like, I like, do like the idea and the concept behind it. Not having dived too deep into it, but at the outset, it, it does sound very interesting. I'll just say, you know, just being a little bit biased towards Bitcoin, that it's not something you can't do on Bitcoin eventually with smart contracts, etc. However, uh, I do like the concept and and where they're going with it. And EOS is interesting, although I'll always harp on about decentralization. Um, it is interesting, and it, what is most interesting is that it is challenging Ethereum very strongly from a world computer smart contracting sort of automated platform because i mean i think we all remember when ethereum was launched it wasn't launched as a currency it was you know at least that's not what the marketing hype was all about it was launched as, as a world computer and i think we can all remember the the, the video with the white background with sort of apple style that uh, uh, vitalik uh, uh, buterin uh, uh, used to market uh, ethereum it was touted as a world computer and as a smart contracting platform and as the the iPhone as opposed to the the brick old Nokia 32010 Bitcoin. Uh, <laughs> that, that's what how it was compared. So yeah, no, it's 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 very interesting how how the space is growing and and you know Coinbase has always had um, it's always had that that power, if I can put it that way. You know, when they give the nod to something, it does affect prices, does affect markets, does affect interest in a project, and and it has a knock-on effect, if I can put it that way. And, and yourself, Suyash, in the last week or so, I mean, what what has caught your attention, positive or negative, that you feel is uh, had an impact or was worth discussing in the news with regards to crypto? Well, on my end, there has been a lot of um, local news um, from um, in Mauritius, actually. So in Mauritius, we have what we call the FSC, the Financial Services Commission, which um, is kind of the um, regulator in the financial sector in Mauritius. And they have been doing quite some um, interesting stuff for once um, in the last few weeks, like Lately, they launched a um, custodianship license, um, which companies could apply for and engage in custodian services in Mauritius. And secondly, they launched, uh, they, 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 uh, they submitted some, some, some additional, like say, information about security token offerings, what we term as STOs. And these are quite interesting developments because it opens up the way for companies um, in different uh, fintech sectors um, engaged in the blockchain space to come up and set up different businesses and different businesses business models and that's a 
good, actually a very good thing for. So are you for, saying for they, they put out, they've released guidance, official guidance from from the FSC? Correct. Um, yeah, um, they 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 have um, issued guidance uh, for STS. So yes, that's that's actually a very good thing. So of course, um, honestly, I think that they are moving very slowly, but uh, things are uh, are beginning to unravel, and this opens up new opportunities for us and for Absolutely. the for, for the community um, at large and and I believe that maybe if more African countries are going to follow suit then it could be that um, Africa become the next like blockchain I, I, I love to use this term blockchain continent so um, I'm on, on mine I'm very keen on on, on developing blockchain and cryptocurrency in the African in the African, African continent, African region, and, yeah, the African region, African ecosystem, and I think that's a very, very good news um, for at least for the local economy. Very interesting. Well, guys, on on that note, um, let's call it a wrap. Uh, thank you for the first episode of Let's Talk Crypto, and we will convene again same time next week. <laughs>